Hello, everyone. We always like to start off with giving our classes because how we give, that's how Hashem will give to us. But let's give generously. So Hashem will give us generously. Please put some coins in the tzedakah and um, just know that tzedakah is protection. So everyone should be protected. And we always like to start off with Tehillim. We're going to say some names that need it, and I'm including everyone. Rafur Shalema, Farhana Yente, Rifkaba Shendol, Chana Bela Bas Devora, Yosef Ben Devora Lea, Razel Bas Adas, Rafal Chaimer Ben Sima Chasha, Yosef Shlomo Ben Risha, Yosef Yitzchak Ben Bela, Devora Lea Bas Yafa Liba, Esther Bela Bas Yehudis, Chana and Mercedes Ben Esther, and everyone that needs, we're including it. We're going to start off with Tehillim, if everyone can get yours handy. And we're going to say Psalm 20, which is Kapitel Chaf, for the hostages to come home, it's time. And for the uh, protection of the IDF, um, the Chayalim and Chayalo, who are literally tzaddikim, protecting us. And I'm going to mention one name, but we're really going to include everyone in this name. My cousin, who is in Gaza right now, just went in. He's a commander, Rafael Ben Devoralea. He should be safe along with everyone, and they should they should merit to bring the hostages home immediately. Lam not sayach mizmar le David yancha adinai bian sara. Yisa gevcha shemel hea kaiv yeshlach azracha mi kaidesh. Umitsian yisa decha yiskar komen chaisecha ve laska yidash nasela. Yite la chachel va vefcha ve chot as chayimale. Niranana bishu a secha u vishemel hainu nid golimale adinai komeshal a secha. Ata yadaiti ki ashia adinai mishichaya neu mishme kachai de gurai se shayiminai. Ela Varechav, the Ela Vasusim, Va Nachnu Bishema Adinai Lehenu Naskir, Hema Karu, Vina Falu, Va Nachnu Kamenu Minsaidad, Adinai Hashia, Hamelachia Nenu, Vm Karinu. It is known that Semach Sadek said, if we only knew the power of Tehillim, we would say it day and night. So please don't stop saying Tehillim for the hostages and for the protection of the Jews all around the world. We need it so badly, and of course, for Mashiach to come. So today's class, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. My sister-in-law reached out to me and my niece, um, my sister-in-law Simcha and my niece Esti, and they sent me a clip. We October 7th happened and our, all of our worlds changed. Um, and basically, there is a Siem Sefer Torah happening, a Sefer Torah that is being written in memory of an incredible, incredible human and commander, and I'm going to say Tzadik because that's what he is, um, for Dekel Suisa. And we spoke about him after October 7th, Esti, which you're going to hear from her a little later, um, shared about her cousin um, and how his passing affected her. And I said, I really want to spread this amazingness that he started, this Sefer Torah, but I really want everyone to feel who he is, what they're giving to, what the cause is that they're giving to. So I reached out to his brother and sister who I personally know. And what's interesting is just yesterday, I was going through my Google photos for something. I was looking for a picture and a picture of myself and, and Deckel's family came up. He wasn't in the picture, but Lita was in there and his mom and father and sister. And it just made me realize that this is the right thing for us to do on this platform and this program to share. And it was almost like it was like a message from above from Dekel saying, I approve this message. I really want you to do this for my neshama. So today we're going to hear about Dekel's legacy, about how he influenced so many thousands and hundreds of people, and why I feel so humble to know Dekel is because I didn't, I, I actually got to meet him personally years ago when he was younger in my sister in law Simcha and Zalman's, my brother Zalman's house. They had, they have a, incredible, but they're also related. So they would come when they would come to America, they would come to them. And it was, they, they, it's interesting. It's actually very appropriate, the timing, but um, I met him on Simcha's Torah. Lital told me it was Simcha's Torah that they came to their house and I was there and I met the family. So our souls connected at one point. It's not just, you know, we're all connected, but we really connected. And I felt like he gave me a message yesterday that this is what he wanted for us to do. So I'm going to introduce to you, um, he also saved his entire unit, which we're going to hear about later. Like he took the bullet for his entire unit. Um, so we're going to hear from um, Eden and Lital Suisa. So I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you so much. We're going to share some video footage and they're going to share pictures. And I hope, I hope you're going to be as um, connected as I am to 
to uh, to um, their brother, and we should merit to see him with the coming of Mashiach, and we are going to make that happen together. So thank you for being here, Eden, and thank you for being here, Lita Lital. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Um, and if you could tell us also, before you start your screen, mm -hmm. um, if you're comfortable with it, what, and I asked this to everyone's question, what October 7th meant to you? Like, where were you when it happened? Just to give a little bit of background. Of yeah, so um, we have, uh, we went to, in Simchatora, we went to our uh, father and mother's home um and we go we we go we went to a bit Knesset and uh to the synagogue in the evening and in each one of us uh when the akafot started so something um not like uh, irregular not 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 regular happened uh after one akafa so i I tell the, to my wife, I want to go home. I feel something. Uh, I don't feel comfortable. And also, uh, in some way, Lital and my little sister know you also uh, back, uh, go back home. And then um, we went to bed to sleep. And I wake up in the morning and I, uh, I wake up from a, a dream. A dream that I saw Dekel, uh, and it was on a. We was together on a, a ski, uh, like a ski resort and a mountain with the snow, just the two of us. And he told me, "Listen, Eden, there is a lot of things to do, and there's a lot of missions, and I have to go." And I told him, "Told him, Dekel, what are we talking about?" And he told me, "Don't worry. Um, if something will happen to me, just." know um, that I love you and I love the family. And that's it. <laughs> and, he, uh, and he goes away. And then uh, it sounds crazy, but this was the dream of when my, my mother uh, wake me up and says, there is a war. Uh, we need to go to the shelter. And that's it began. And we all try to reach the kill. And we couldn't, um, and we got the message after two days. But um, but I already knew that I I don't believe that I'm gonna speak with Dekel about this dream. It felt so real, and I mean, like it's great. It was crazy for me. Uh, like something he sent a message or something like this. Wow, and he must have been such a high soul because you mentioned from that dream at that point in the dream he already was he still here with us or did he already pass away? No, he was still with us. It was uh, like, let's say six in the morning, something like this. So it's almost like I wake his, up. His... I wake up at six thirty. So his neshama already knew what was going to happen, and he prepared you before 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 the message. He already prepared you guys. Wow. Okay. I think so. Yeah. So, um, if you can start the presentation now. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Very. Um, I know it's not easy to talk about. Yeah. Mm, let me know if you see my screen. Yeah, we see it. All right. Um. So. Um. There is uh, one sentence uh, that we um, share. Uh, it's what Dekel wrote to his um, uh, someone he, he dated with. He sent her a message, and a WhatsApp message. Don't forget to smile when you wake up. And she took it after he uh, died and uh, did the sticker uh, from this. And this is what he believed. And what you can see about here uh, on the photo is exactly what Dekel was. He was so humble, and um, he he have a, a little smile on his face always, but is um, not looking you uh, like straight. Um, 
is he was a very quiet man and but leadership with the quiet that that is the strongest and so he was 23 year, years old um and he, and um this is some pictures of his childhood uh we live in a moshav that's called bargior and my father and uh, mother are Moshe and Gila. And he named uh, after my grandma, Tamar, because Tamar, it's the, um, it's a date and uh, it's uh, the palm tree it gave the, the, the date. So that was the connection. And we are four brothers and sisters, uh, Lital, she's the oldest, and then I and then Noi, and Dekel was the little one. And he grew up as independent and uh, very mature, and he was always with a smile uh, on his face and laugh. Um, and he was, you know, uh, a little brother. So you feel that you, uh, we have uh, a lot of years uh, between us. So Lital, she's uh, 16 years older than him, and I, uh, 12 years, and I, uh, six, so we always knew that when Dekel is arrived, uh, all what he says, we are like his parents or something else. So everything is yes for to him. And uh, uh, but beside this, he al always to uh, to told us uh, he don't want to be the little one. That uh, we always uh, uh, seek for his um, for his health and then. Um, and about his life, and we always um, take care of him. You want to feel uh, mature. Um, so this is what they can learn. At the age of 15, he decided uh, to go to a military academy uh, school, and it's that called the uh, Hebrew Reality School. It's located in uh, Haifa. And it was uh, not near our house, so we uh, was in a boarding school there. And there he uh, he became uh, very. Uh, he started the the army there. He wanted to go there because he wanted to donate more to the society, and he wanted to be uh, an of officer, and he wanted to be in a. a army career and in Israel uh, when you do it it's um, something that you know you have um, you have a, a goal to do something like this and uh, the army here is something very uh, that everyone do and um, he decided to do, to do more and he, uh, his friends um, became our family and also uh, there is one of his best friends uh, that called uh, Roy Meldasi. And in their uh, age, there are like um, 40, 40 uh, that graduate from this uh, school in this age. There are uh, two, two boys there that killed in this, in this war. Um, and it was Dekel and Roy Meldasi. They were the best friends and and now we are the, we are family with the friends and we are share uh, with the with Roy family and we share um this this thing and uh what i can show here it's a video that in the uh, military school spoke about Dekel and that he get um uh, excellence there so i just showed the video ‫הערבות שלו בפלוגה ובפנימיה. ‫המצוינות היא חלק מחייו, ‫הוא לא חושש להתמודד עם קשיים ‫ולהעמיס על עצמו משימות. ‫כשחניך בפלוגה רוצה להוציא לפועל משימה, ‫הוא בהחלט יבחר בדקל ‫כאיש שיעזור לו להוציאה אל הפועל. ‫דקל אחראי על התחנכותו, ‫ולא ייתן לאף אחד לעמוד בדרכו ‫אל ההצטיינות הבאה, ‫ולא משנה המסגרת, ‫כושר גופני, בית הספר או בפנימיה. ‫דקל משימתי, אהוב ומוערך על ידי חבריו. עצמאי ויודע את דרכו, הוא בא על אישיות לדוגמה, כאשר כל משימותיו נעשות בהשקט ובבטחה ובהצנע לכת. 
על המנהיגות השקטה של דקל, לצד הערכיות האדירה והשאיפה התמידית למצוינות, תוענק לו תעודת הצטיינות זו. boarding school came to our home and talk about how, how much Deckel wanted to be also um, a family uh, guy and also a, a soldier. So he, um, he shared with us something that we didn't know. He shared with us this picture that Deckel made in a, in a class of art that Deckel put himself uh, in a Photoshop, uh, two parts of him. And this is what he wrote to, about himself um, when he was 16 or 17 years old. These are my two parts. On one side stand the decal of the army and the other uh, the decal of the home. The challenge is to see that each side reflects the other different yet living together within the, the same framework. Um, so this is what he wanted. He wanted to feel uh, that he can be these two guys uh, on the same personality and to bring the army home and to take the home to the army. Um, after we finished the boarding school, so uh, it like most of the of the people in, in Israel and also uh, exactly in the uh, in this army boarding school uh, went straight to the army because they wanted to um, to be an of, uh, officer uh, and they want to go to the army as fast as they can. But Dekel uh, speak with me with uh, Lital, my sister, and uh, she also did uh, two years of uh, service in uh, in the U.S. So he wanted also to uh, to do this here, uh, to feel and to um, to learn and also to give um, whatever from his uh, from his soul to the community. And we are, we here have uh, his best friend from this year, uh, Itai, that uh, maybe can share a few things uh, about decals. Uh, just before it, I, I just want to show you the, um, the video that Deckel made uh, to um, get ex accepted to this program. This is my, he made about himself. And um, just before I will show you it, uh, there is one soldier that I told you about him, that they uh, were pictured together. Uh, this is Ray. And you can see um, on the on the video. Hello, my name is Ekel Suisa. I'm 18 years old. I live in Moshav Bar Giora. I'm studying in a military boarding school in Haifa. I really like football, swimming, to hiking, my friends, better wish I like. And this is who I am. לחץ הגיע היום, לא דמיינתי שכל כך מהר החליפה מגועצת והחבר המלווה כבר צופר אמא כל כך מתרגשת, אפילו ירדו לה כבר כמה דמעות האורחים מגיעים לשיקות חיבוקים רק בשמחות החופה מתחילה והרגל לא מפסיקה לראות והרב מתחיל ל... Deckel's video that he made for him by himself. So um, now if you, uh, if you die, want to share something with us. Thank you, Eden. Um, 
I'm, I'm getting touched every single time I'm seeing this video. Like I remember how much we talked about creating this video and working on it and what is the important things that you want to show, what you want to tell about ourselves, like how we're telling our story and Dekel really needs to do it funny and, and close it like as much as he can and show his life and like you probably can understand a lot like uh, from what uh, Eden said and from the video how much he tried to put joy in his life and like having good people around him and do it as much as he can. Um, so as Eden said, my name is Itai. I, I served with Decker. We did the, the Shlichut together in uh, the Jewish community in Atlanta for a year. And uh, we worked together. We lived together for a year at the same community. And we had so many experience and things that we've been through um, in this year. And uh, something really special that I can say, me and Dekel already get to know each other over the process um, of accepting for the program. And it's not an easy, an easy thing to do. Like there is only 200 uh, kids that accepting from the program from 2000 every single year. And something that really goes with Dekel over the process and also over the year uh, that I want to share that the love of for, for the country for the, the for Israel like the, the the love that he have for the country you can see it in every single step that he have in his life and also for the Jewish for, for the Jewish community in general like every single thing that he did in this gap year was with like his his eyes were spark and he had so much passion for what he did and he wanted to do as much as he can for every single person that he's seen on his life and the impact that he had on the community and um, after a year, it's something that we can see still until today. Like I'm talking with a lot of kids that we that, that been in the same school that we worked in and we're still in touch. And like you see how much that can impact them, the love for the country that you have. And like there is a lot of kids that came to Israel uh, to do a year in yeshiva or in Mechina or going to the army and, and they're going like after Dekel. They're really talking with me and saying like Dekel give us so much spirit and so much power and so much love for this country but we, that we wanted to come. We want to come to Israel. We have a huge love for Israel because of Dekel. And I feel so blessed and I feel so like I'm, I'm saying thank you uh, that I had the opportunity to just be around him and, and learn from him a lot like still and you know, processing this year and processing everything that's happened after October 7, process my story with Dekel will never end. And I'm learning so much new things that I learned because of Dekel. Um, and this is one thing, the love for the country and the love for the land and the, the, the idea of that we need to live a life that of, of giving, not getting from the world. We need to live as, as the giver in this world, to give as much as we can for every single person that we are meeting in our life. And this is something that I learned from Dekel. Another thing that I really learned from him that I really got touched for it's it's the love for the family and, and the, the the care that he had for his family and for his uh, sisters and for um, uh, Gila and Moshe his parents like his family was everything for him and it doesn't matter every single day in the shlichut he needs to talk with some of them every single uh, Friday before Shabbat he's given a call for home and he like the care that he had for his family was something that I really got touched from because my family like we had we have a great connection but it wasn't something really a close and when I saw Deke like talk with his brother and his sister like it's made me feel that I'm doing a wrong job of being a family member and I'm, I'm seeing it also now like the, the the love and the care that he had for his family and the respect that he had for his parents was something that I really got touched from and something that I took with myself from getting to know Deke like how much it's important to take care of our family and being close and being there for every single family member and and again, like the, the impact that he had on the Jewish community, every single time I'm going to visit in Atlanta, I'm seeing like how many people got touched by Dekel and how many people learned from him so, so much. And the people like get in touch, not only because um, uh, what he teach them, because the person that he is, as Dekel said, he was mature from when he born, he was mature every single time that he, every single step in his life. Like it's a person that you want to look up for and the person that you want to learn and be close to. And I'm so happy that I had the opportunity in life to spend a year with this person. Um, and I'm really happy that, uh, that we're having the opportunity to also continue to share his story and continue his legacy in every single place that we are going. And also thank you for this opportunity. I feel that it's so important to continue the story in every single place that we are going. And as Eden said, the sentence is the beginning. Don't forget to smile. It's something that we need to take with ourselves for our life. I know that this is something that Decker, we want us to do to continue our life and smile and be happy and bring more 
happiness to our life and give as much as we can to the community and the world and not being in the um, getting side, being in the giver side um, as much as we can. So Itai, just one question for you. Lital told me that you mentioned to her that you did something in honor of um, Dekel's memory and you came to 770. Can you tell us about it, why you came, when you came, just so we so, know? Yes. So I'm in New York right now um, on a business trip for my job. I'm working in an informal education, in a Jewish leadership program. And the first time I visited the 770 in my life, it was with Dekel. Like on our gap year, uh, we 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 had a something we had something in New York, and Dekel took me for the first time to 770. He told me that it's something that I need to do and I need to experience and I need to be there. And we spent Shabbat there together, um, and it was one of the unforgettable memories that I'm having in my life, like spending Shabbat in Brooklyn and in in, the, in 770. Um, and 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 that was the the last time I've been in New York. And now when I'm traveling, I said like, if I'm in New York, I need to go to the 770. Uh, so I've been there yesterday, um, and I just sit there for an hour. You went yourself, hall. or you went with friends? By myself, by myself. I wow. just went there, and I told myself like I need to go there. I'm I'm having something in my life that I want to go for a lot of places that I've been with Dekel, just to feel him, to be with him, and in those moments, so I was just sitting there for an hour, not even praying or holding a sidu or doing anything, just sitting there and feeling him in this moment and trying to remember the great experience and the great memory that I had there with him. And uh, because it really opened my eyes for so many things that I wasn't aware for. Um, and he was so smart, smarter than me, definitely. Um, and it was just, I, I just had really good time just sitting there and connected to him uh, through this place. Um, and I know how much this place was a lot for him. He, he spent a lot of time there with his family over Simchat Torah. Once he told me a story that he'd been there uh, with his father. Like, And I, I heard so many stories uh, about Dekel. And in 770, so it was really important for me that if I'm here in New York and I'm having the opportunity, I need to go there and just be in there. Um, and it just gave me more power to continue doing what I'm doing in life and to continue sharing his story in every single place that I'm going and seeing people here in New York and then telling the story in every single place that I'm going. It's something that I'm keeping with myself. Thanks to him that giving me the power to do it and continue it. Wow, thank you for sharing. And I hope you always feel Deco in your life. And Thank we're going to see him again so soon with the coming of Mashiach. And you're going to help make that happen because that's what he wants. So Thank you. he wants to see you again and his family in person. Okay, we're going to give it back to Eden. Thanks. Thank you, Itai, very much. Uh, it was very kind of you. And um, also, I, I know that they can very appreciate all what you do. And... Um, and also the, the time we had together. Um, um, also, uh, I will share my screen again. Um, Vital, if you want to say something, you... So, uh, yeah, this is a uh, uh, few photos of Deckel, of Deckel, and also you can see ties here uh, in the, um, uh, the service in Atlanta. So what we learned the last the past year is that Dekel we didn't know it but Dekel Dekel ran a diary um, of all what he, he did and all what he want to do and write to himself to himself how to do it better and he has he have a lot of um, notebooks a lot of notebooks that uh, he wrote anything there. And uh, every time he done uh, um, uh, something in his life, uh, so he wrote about what he takes. What do I take for myself from the last year in Atlanta? That he writes, uh, what he wrote, and he started to um, do it in the points. And the uh, first one was uh, in Hebrew, it's uh, like, it says, Batachles akol be'emet letova. So he really, I uh, believe that everything that happened is for a good reason. Um, you know, it's really um, hard to believe that it's true because um, the past year and what happened, it's very difficult for us to, to think that it's happened for a good reason. It's difficult. Um, but what we learn, it's 
it's not that it's easy or it's very good that they can slide, but what what good is what we're doing from it and what and the uh, the soul of it that we share and um and the good that we are doing because uh, of Decker. Uh, so this is what happened for good, you know. And the second thing he wrote to himself is there is no reason to wake up in the morning and stay like this all the all the day. Um, so this is what he learned from this year. And also in the age of 18, he decided to wrote to himself, um, I'm gonna do a Birkat Kohanim to my children. And he says here, uh, you can see, is uh, how we wanna call them, like the, their names. And he gonna have a tradition that every uh, Friday night, he will take his children to the um the side of the table and give him give them a personal birkat kohanim that that's what he sees in Atlanta and we don't do it at home but from now on we are doing it and I do it for my kids and my father I do it and everyone I do it and they tell do it um and and also he uh. He write to himself to think about stuff that uh, um, it's not reasonable to happen and just do it. Uh, make the impossible possible and do your best on your ev and everything. But this is a good, let's say, a, a, let's say, um, um, sentences that you know you write to himself to yourself and your it's a um i don't know the word in, in english is like password or something that not password but um something that uh, it's uh it's not real it's just you wrote but they can really uh live like this um and if you uh see this sentence here so there is a story that in uh, in the unit uh, that he served, um, one week they had um, they just um, stay in the base and uh, they have had no bus to take him to train and to training. And my father and he talked to my father and talking to the commander and he talked with everyone just to make sure that they will get a bus and to take them to to do the training and for for being able to get this bus so they will volunteer all the unit and a place to to pay for this bus um so what he wrote to himself he really live to it after um his uh, service on atlanta he he decided that before the army he know that he's gonna be in the army a lot of time. So before it, he need to increase um, the uh, his spirit, and he need to learn a bit Torah. So we went to a pre academy, uh, pre military academy, to learn uh, to learn Torah. So this is what what he done for seven months. And when we ask him why you do it, why you uh, delayed your service in the army, uh, you're already 19. You're gonna, you wanna, you wanna join army like in the age of uh, uh, 20. So it's not, it's not, um, um, it's very unique to do it. Uh, so this is also, we know uh, after, uh, this is what he wrote to himself why you wanna do it. So he said, um, increase my spirit. Uh, and I think this is the right uh, thing to do uh, for myself. And here he says, you only live once and nobody's chasing on me. Um, when, I, when I saw it, it was very difficult to me to see it because um, is right. You only only live once, so you need to do whatever you want to do. And 
and don't think about everyone else that uh, what they will think and and that just do whatever you think you you should do. Um, when Dekel finished his uh, pre-military academy, so he uh, went to elite unit called Maglan, and he met their friends. It's very uh, also unique uh, unit, and they have a training of uh, one year and eight months, just a training, and that. Just after this, they're going to be like a soldiers um, um, that doing stuff. And I I remember that Dekel didn't sleep in this time and um, and how it was important for him. And here um, we can hear about one of his friends that uh, became became our our family. Um, speak about Dekel. And he recorded while he also in Gaza, so you can see it, uh, uh, the behind. Hi, my name is Sammy. I moved from um, the five towns to Israel in 2013. Um, I met Aliyah with my family. Um, and I met Deco um, um, once I drafted um, in March of 2020, the height, like right at the beginning of the Corona, um, the whole Corona mess. Um, so we drafted, I, it was a crazy time. Um, usually would go home after the first week, but we ended up staying there for like the first month. Um, ended up closing Seder, Pesach Seder, um, which was crazy. And right off the bat, I knew that I met someone um, really special. Um, just like this kind, uh, warm person that I didn't, didn't really ever meet someone like that before. Um, and I somehow knew that, you know, I, I mean, I didn't know it instantly, but I would, you know, learn, I would learn it pretty quickly. Um, and our relationship just, you know, from the first time we met, um, on the first day I slept, you know, we were in bunk, bunk beds and like basic training and he was above me and, um, you know, just for the first, really throughout the whole year and four months of training, we were just always, you know, next to each other. Um, I really found something really special in him. Um, with time, I, you know, got to know his family really well. He got to know my family. We got, we went to each other's houses for Shabbos whenever we could. We didn't get out so much, but, you know, we tried to, you know, really, to really do that. Um, and he really comes from an amazing family, very Moroccan, um, which was new to me for sure. Even though I lived in, in Israel for a couple of years before that, I never really met a proper uh, Moroccan family like that. Um, Deco, I call him Suisa, he wasn't always from. Um, he grew up in a very uh, traditional Moroccan household, but never, never really 100% um, Shomer Shabbos and never 100% from. And his uh, his transition to becoming from really started um, with him going to for a year of like national service um, after he finished high school in Atlanta, in the Jewish community in Atlanta, and there he was involved with the community, the firm community, and he really somehow, it, something like a spark just lit up inside of him. Um, and from there, he came back to Israel. He stayed another half year in a pre-army yeshiva called Yeshiva Teili. Um, and from there on, he just kept on getting, you know, more I'm just gonna say more of a tzaddik, just more from and more learned, always wanting to learn halacha, divrei Torah, emuna. Um, he always knew how to like, you know, build balkore and lane because that's just how he grew up. But just like, uh, I just feel like it became, took like another level once he started becoming more from, you know, he would go up and daven and his voice was beautiful. Um, it was amazing, like the hardest, a lot of the hardest times when you're just like 
you know, tired or, you know, after a long day, he would, you know, he would try to get the guys together for, for Minion and um, he would always have um, Silas Yasharim with him learning. And um, it was definitely something uh, to look up to. I know it pushed me a lot. He was always talking about just learning Mishnayas, uh, everything. Everything he could get his hands on, he was just constantly doing better and better, um, trying to get better and better, and, and I guess learning more and more about Yiddishkeit, I guess you could say. Um, um, yeah, it's not easy to talk about. He is like really close to me. Um, I'm trying my best way, like in, in the best way to explain who, who he was. He's just like a mensch. I think the best way to to explain him is um, he just like this sweet, warm person who really got along with everyone. Um, and just a good, just a good guy. Just like a mensch, a good, a good boy, uh, a great soldier, um, a great friend, great friend. I sort of, looked, I sort of looked at him as like sort of an older brother, even though we were the same age. Um, yeah, he's definitely, definitely hit really hard. Um, on the seventh, when he uh, was killed, and till this day, it's it's an ongoing, you know, for sure for his family and for sure for close friends, um, it's it's ongoing, and um, it's just nice to talk about him a little to get his uh, name out there. He's a special person. Uh, Um, so when Dekel uh, finished uh, his training in uh, Maglan, so uh, we decided to go to the office, uh, infantry of officer, officer course. Um, so I wanted to be an offi officer. Uh, it was like a month of, uh, of course. Um, he decided to go there after... Um, even though he knew that he's not going to be back on Maglan unit, uh, because um, they asked him and Maglan to go on the first, uh, first time that they asked them, him to go to the officer course. So we let them know. So we told them uh, that he want to be a soldier before he's going to be an officer. He need to fill the field before he uh, be. And they told him, all right, now it's your op op option to go there and then you can go uh, to be back in the uh, unit. Uh, but he decided to first feel how it's going to be soldier in field before he's going to be um, officer uh, because he believed that if uh, you are... Um, if you're not be in the field, so you cannot share your uh, your uh, um, professional with the soldiers, um, and and when he uh, done the officer course, so he became um, an officer in a Golan unit. Um, this is the unit that, in fact, uh, in all Israelis role roles every time. Um, it was the first unit that go there, so that's why they called uh, they they called the um number one unit. So you he, he decided to go there to be um rookie training uh, to be an officer there uh, and to uh, teach them how uh, is legacy, let's say, his uh, soul and his spirit, and to uh, let them, to uh, shape them as as uh, he wants. And they told us on the Shiva and after, and they and they came to our home every um, every now and then, and 
and they let us know that he was like a father for them. And it was, uh, it really feel, felt like this in our, also in our private life, because I had a lot of questions from Dekel that spoke about his uh, soldiers. And if some soldier need um, an, any help with something that not related to the army. So, you know, uh, he called to a lawyer to uh, to help to his uh, friend and he uh, asked for donations to the soldiers. And he talked with, he was really like a, fa a father to them. And after uh, eight uh, months of training, they had um, they had a, a beret um, journey that they uh, take their brown beret there, as you can see in this uh, picture. And in this uh, um, uh, this ending of the so it was a ceremony there that they get the beret, and he took. Uh, the families and the soldiers, and he had a speech to them. And now he told them, so this is what we practice and uh, we get a lot from this training, but now we're gonna be on the field. And he made a promise to the parents there. Um, and you can see it uh, in a few seconds on a video that I will share. But he promised there that he's gonna be as best as you can and gonna do the best you can to bring back his, uh, their son's home. He uh, promised to the parents and he kept his promise. Um, on October uh, 7th, Dekel was on uh, a outpost called Paga. It's something like um, a few hundred meters in, on the border of Gaza, and he was uh, the so, the commander to of the outpost because the, um, he was the only officer there. It was an outpost that everyone went. Usually, it's going to be uh, something like one hundred soldiers, um, but on Simchat Torah, it was just uh, thirty because uh, everyone went home, and Dekel was there stay there for the Simchat Torah and one of his uh, uh, soldiers told us that uh, uh, he do they can lead um, a kafot, uh, circles uh, on the um, uh, they call it uh, the vid on the a car that they do around it on the base there and on the day, uh, he, um, on this day, he uh, saved his soldiers' lives as they uh, told us. And now we can um, uh, we can hear the story. <laughs> I <laughs> <laughs> Gibor Israel, the man of 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 the man
בשכיבת פצוע היה עליו חייל שלו, הוא הניח אותו והוא אמר לכולם בזמן הירי להגיע להיות לידו במעגל. אני לא הבנתי מה הוא רוצה בכלל, לא... כאילו אמרתי, מה זה קשור עכשיו? הוא אמר לנו... הוא אמר לנו תקשיבו, לא משנה מה, אנחנו נגרוף אחד, אנחנו נלחם פה עד טיפת הדם האחרונה, זה גדוד 13 וזה פלוגה ג'. דקל סוויסה חלם תמיד להיות מפקד. הלך לפנימייה הצבאית בריאלי בחיפה, כאילו הכין את עצמו כל השנים לרגע כזה. הוא הקצין שלוקח עכשיו אחריות על מה שקורה במוצב. הדקל הגיע ואמר ש... שהחילוץ לא עומד להגיע בקרוב, שיש יותר מדי מחבלים ושיש להם יותר מדי uh, ציוד ושאנחנו לא יכולים להתמודד איתם לבד. אורי בשלב הזה מחפה מחוץ לחדר האוכל, כשדקל מגיע ואומר לו לחזור פנימה. החלטה שתציל את חייו של אורי ותהיה ההחלטה האחרונה בחייו של דקל ושל רועי, הלוחם שאיתו. לרוץ כולם ביחד זה לא חכם, כי אנחנו חשופים לכל האש, אז רצים בזוגות, כל פעם זוג רץ וזוג מחפה עליו. נשארנו ארבעה אנשים, בעצם שתי זוגות, דקל ורועי חיפו עלינו, ובעצם רועי ודקל היו צריכים לרוץ אחרי זה בלי חיפוי. אז אנחנו רצנו, נכנסנו פנימה, ברגע שנכנסנו התחלנו לשמוע ירי מטורף. ומאז עבד הקשר איתם. ניסיתי לעלות מול דקל, ושם הוא לא ענה יותר. אתה מנסה לא לחשוב על זה, אז אתה רוצה להאמין שהתקלקל לו הקשר. קשה לדבר, כאילו, אין לי יותר מדי תחושות בגוף או בראש או... אחרי שדקל סוויסה, זיכרונו לברכה, נהרג. לא היה לנו אף אחד שיכווין אותנו, יפקד עלינו, יגיד לנו מה לעשות. היינו אנחנו בשביל עצמנו. כשאתה מסתכל על זה היום אחורה. אני אומר לעצמי, כאילו, וואו, זה לא נורמלי, קשה לעכל. אני מקווה שאנשים מבינים שאם לא היה את המוצב הזה, אז הטבח בקיבוצים היה נראה פי מאה יותר גרוע. יאללה, אדם דחוף, לא חרוך! אנשים שם נלחמו על החיים שלהם. זה קרב הירואי, ואני בטוח שידברו עליו עוד הרבה הרבה שנים. כאילו להפציץ אותנו. תחילת הלחימה דקל שולח חייל לתת טילאו, איך שהוא נותן את הטיל הוא חוטף כדור ונהרג במקום. דקל הכניס את הגופה לחדר אוכל ופשוט עשה להם בתוך החדר אוכל מין נאום כזה וממש אמר נילחם עד טיפת הדם האחרונה, אנחנו גולני, גולני לא מוותרים, לא נשברים. כל הזמן דקל דרש מאיתנו דוח מצב, מספר אוהד. דקל היה הקצין היחיד, הוא היה בכל מקום. רץ מחדר האוכל הש"ג להילחם במחבלים, מפנה פצועים וחוזר להילחם. <אח> שש שעות אוהד והצמד שלו, דניאל, נלחמים בעשרות מחבלים. הם לא יודעים מה קורה במוצב, ודאי לא מה קורה בארץ. רק בשעות הצהריים הם חוברים לצוות ציור שחזר לחלץ את מי שנשאר בחיים. הם מקבלים פקודה לעזוב את המוצב. התחלנו להתקדם לפני היציאה. אנחנו באמת רואים את, uh, את הקצין מוצב דקל סוויסה, 
הרוג. לידו עוד חייל מהפלוגה. מסביב דקל שבעה מחבלים הרוגים. ראינו את דקל וזה פשוט פירק אותנו, כאילו עצרנו לש... לשנייה וחצי כזה, את הריצה, זה פירק אותנו. בזכות דקל אנחנו הצלחנו לצאת מהמוצב, הוא ניקה לנו את השטח מהמחבלים בש"ג הקדמי. אחד הפנקסים הוא רושם, ברגע שאני מזהם שיש מחבל, אני רוצה להגיע אליו. זה שיש מחבל לא אומר לשנות את סדר הלחימה. ואז הוא רושם, לא להילחץ, אין איום בלי מענה. את המילים האלה שסרן דקל סוויסה, זכרו לברכה, כתב לעצמו, הוא זכר היטב ברגע האמת, ב-7 באוקטובר, כשמפקד מחלקת סוויסה מצא עצמו מפקד בעצם על מוצב שלם, רק כמה מאות מטרים מגדר הגבול עם עזה. בתקופות הקשות הייתי מדבר איתו. ומתייעץ איתו, והוא היה לוקח אותי להתבודדות. הייתי שואל שאלות, ו- וצועק, ומדבר, והוא אומר לי, זה טוב, זה טוב, תדבר. עכשיו אני מרגיש שאני צריך אותו בשביל לעבור את התקופה הזאת. למשפחה של דקל אין אותו, אבל יש לה עכשיו משפחה אחת גדולה ומורחבת. המשפחה של קרב הגבורה במוצב פגה, או בשמו הצבאי, מוצב מגן בארי. כולם כאן, משפחות הנופלים, וגם החיילים ששרדו את התופת, והמשפחות שלהם. אני לא חוזר ללוחמה, בגלל פציעה נפשית, כאילו כל מיני תסמינים של פוסט-טראומה. בתוך כל החושך שהשתלט עליהם מאז המתקפה, הם בחרו לחגוג יחד את חנוכה, ומצאו זה בזה אלומת אור. הנרות הללו שאנו מדליקים. ברגע שהבנו שאוקיי, חנוכה, זה היה ברור ש... שהולכים לעשות איזשהו ערב אה, למחלקה של דקל. שבעה באוקטובר, חג שמחת תורה, ובמוצב פגה סוגרים שבת בסך הכל רק כ-30 חיילים, מחלקת הפיקוד של סוויסה בגדוד 13 וצוות מרגמות של הגדוד. אף אחד מהם לא מעלה בדעתו שעם שחר יגיעו למקום כ-150 מחבלי חמאס. בימים האחרונים הגיעו המשפחות אל המוצב, נחשפו למראות הקשים, לעדות האילמת לכל מה שעברו בניהם באותו יום נורא. כשהלכתי לשם וראיתי את המוצב ואת המרחקים שדקל רץ בהם ממקום למקום, פשוט לא ייאמן. ואיזה כוח היה לו. אולי סוויסה! אולי סוויסה! סוויסה יש רק אחד! When we speak about it, we know about, we want to remember his life and not only uh, his death. So uh, like decades, we gonna choose our goals and uh, follow his, uh, follow his uh, path. And uh, our uh, goal is uh, don't forget to smile. Um, only thing that uh, also I want to share about uh, the last um, um, the last uh, battle on uh, Paga. So what you saw uh, before, it was um, soldiers that talk about the, uh, about the battle. And sometimes There is a lot of uh, stories in, in between because uh, the battle started at, at 6.30 in the morning and the kill killed uh, something like 12. Uh, so it was like five or six hours that he uh, fight there. And like they said, he was everywhere and he ran uh, in the uh, outpost and he carries soldiers on the shoulders and soldiers be in, in our house and they uh, told us how Dekel slapped them and uh, uh, um, 
make them uh, be more awake and even though the uh, uh, some someone was wounded and the uh, took care of them and something that happened it was uh, we didn't get get Deckel's stuff from the outpost as you saw in the video um, it was all uh, like uh, light up and it was it was a fire over there, um, so everything burned. Beside three things, um, his phone uh, that was on him, uh, even though it was Shabbat, but it was a battle, so we had to took it. And his uh, coffee make uh, uh, stuff, and his feeling um, that we we received um and it was on a some terrorist wanted to take this but uh, he got shot and they found this feeling over there and when we get his decades phone i saw a history of let's say something like more than a few hundreds of um of um uh, incoming phone calls that he didn't answer Nothing. Just there was one out call. It was nine in the morning. Um, that lasts for thirty seconds. So, but it was a phone that I, re I don't recognize, and there is no uh, name on the uh, on the contract. So I called this number, and then the other side was a soldier that answered me. It was. Um, a soldier that it not is not a fighter. He was a driver over there, and I told I asked him if they could call him and if he talked with him. So he started to cry, and he told me that this is the call that uh, saved his life, because beside this call, uh, Deckel didn't know that uh, he was uh, on. He um, he didn't know where he was, so he was under his bed, and. With this call, Dekel came and took him to the um, safe place and put on him uh, boxes and, and a big uh, pilots, like uh, like a big stuff on it. And he, uh, he was there until the fight, the battle uh, ended because he's not a, um, a fighter. Uh, so Dekel thought about a lot of life. How we uh, keep life on this uh, battle. And also Deckel's legacy uh, is related to um, uh, to be a Jewish person. And what he believed is uh, that every uh, person need to write a Sefer Torah for himself. And what you can see here is a message that one of uh, his friends uh, sent us um, and this is what he wrote to her so listen so you sent them an uh, uh, emoji of a uh, ear and then he said when we was in Morocco he was uh, on some rabbi there and I made a promise to myself that when I have the opportunity I will um, honor my father Is a doing um, Sefer Torah that I will donate, and he will, um, and he will do it. Um, so we uh, try to to uh, do his promise, and we get another story to the of the in the outpost that one of the soldiers told us that uh, one of the terrorists there tried to uh, take the Sefer Torah from the synagogue in the outpost. And he saw Dekel shot him. And they uh, saw that um, the, um, the Sefer Torah is saved. And they wrote about uh, here, uh, you can see, that they wrote about this Sefer that uh, it gets saved because of the um, hero of the soldiers over there. And this all signs uh, 
we believe that connect together and they can want us to uh, do a safer tour. And we will go on and do it in Rosh Chodesh Kislev this year. Um, so this is one of uh, one of uh, our uh, uh, way to keep Dekel's uh, legacy. Um, and another uh, nice story that we have is um, we say, and there's people that say that a Neshama knows 40 days before they live. And we believe that Dekel knew because in the Rosh Hashanah, Dekel uh, went to every house in the Moshav that they he didn't see in the synagogue uh, and they didn't uh, hear a uh, uh, shofar blowing and he, and he blow to the shofar and all the families and one family took a video of him without seeing and uh, this is... This is what he did. Wow. It's so beautiful, but so sad at the same time. And yeah. because we lost such a beautiful person. And like his friend said, Sammy said he was a tzaddik. And he surely was a tzaddik and is a tzaddik. And a tzaddik never dies. And we know that. And we we continue his legacy. So it's incredible that you guys are doing so many initiatives. And I know his friends are probably doing so many initiatives. How can someone donate to the Safer Torah? Can you put the link up so people can see it? This wasn't part of the program, but I'm going to put a link on the description of this YouTube channel. So there's going to be many people that are going to be listening to this. Itai is going to send it to the Chicago, right? That's where he was in Chicago. No, oh, Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. Atlanta, the Atlanta community. He's going to put it up there. Essie's going to put it up there. Shimon's going to put it up in Florida. He's on call now, my brother. I'm going to okay. put it up on all my five broadcasts. And together we're going to honor Deckel's memory and we're going to keep it alive. And it's amazing because to save a life is saving a world, but he saved so many lives that day, hundreds, thousands, um, because they said if if not for him, they would have gotten so many more lives. So many more. They had they had they had a lot more planned that day, and there were so many miracles that day. And Deco was part of the mi big miracle of Kal Yisrael. He saved a lot, and we have to show a car as a type. So I'm going to ask everyone if you're watching this. To give something to Deco. Anything that you can, give more, just like Deco gave more. So we're gonna share. If you can share with us, it might take you a minute to share the the um the campaign that you're doing. And thank you for sharing it with us that we can do it with you Thanks. guys. Because thank you. He's our brother. And I'm gonna share it also in the description on the YouTube. There's there's going to be the chat like you're going to see, and then you're going to be able to click on the description and there's going to be an actual link that you can click on because there's so many people that tune into this class that I don't know who you are. Thank you for tuning in. And we do this weekly and we, we share this with the world to spread more light and love. And today I was very, very moved, even though I knew a lot of the story, I didn't know it like this. I didn't even know. I knew he was a tzaddik, but I, I didn't know how great of a tzaddik he is. So we are going, and then you can show it in a little bit. If you, you'll tell me when you're ready to share the link, but we're going to yeah. go over. Are you ready now or should we wait till after Lital speaks? Um, I can share it and then. Okay. So we're going to show it now. So pay attention. And if you could also spell it out, the, um, the website for those that want to hear audio, I want everyone to have the opportunity to be part of this incredible mitzvah of honoring Dekel's legacy and to protect a Torah. You protect the Torah, the Torah is going to protect you. And I know that Dekel is in the best place upstairs with all the Hasidim and all the Rabbeim and all the Tzadikim. There's no doubt he's with Hashem. Um, so you you shared it in the... Is there a way you could share, share screen? Yeah. 
Okay, so we're gonna press share screen because in the chat box only I see it and those that are on yeah. right now. All right. Um, so uh, is that what you uh, want for uh, to, to share? Uh, this one. Yeah. yeah. So this is a safer Torah and. The amount that you raise is thirteen thousand six hundred and eighty-seven, and the goal is fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And show us where the link is, where people. Well, this probably says about Deckel, right? About his life, and yeah. how could someone donate? It's www. Dot, sorry, it's https causematch. dot com slash Deckel Deckel's Torah, which we're going to post it in the description of the class. So you guys are going to see it and please give something to honor his memory and we could all be part of it. He saved Kal Yisrael and now it's time to do something for his neshama. So now I'm going to ask Lital, mm -hmm. who I personally know and met years ago and we formed a very beautiful friendship. I asked her if it's okay to ask this. Um, she loved her brother so much, and he loves her so much. And I wanted to know, because Eden shared in the beginning a story where he came to him in a, in a dream. And sometimes dreams are what we think about during the day, and sometimes they're real. And this dream is was real because he was almost preparing them, so he knew before he actually knew, to be able to deal with this news of him being taken and Lital is going to share with us today how she feels him today, every day, and how she's honoring his memory. And we're going to keep him alive forever until Mashiach comes. So Lital, thank you for being here. And thank you thank for you sharing. So and thank you for sharing your special, incredible tzaddik of a brother with us. Thank you so much. So from October 7th, I didn't dream like I dream a lot of about Dekel but every time he came to me with a huge off and like smile and tell me one thing that everything going to be okay um Dekel like I feel him during the day through music we both really love music and we like to sing together in the Shabbat table. And Dekel um, have a playlist in his phone. And all the time I told him, okay, I'm going to make a playlist on iTunes, so share it with me. And I think from the time that I have an iPhone, I have Deckel's a playlist. Like every time they have like a new song, Deckel edit, and I can say, actually hear it. And from October seventh, it's really hard for me to hear some music, but when it's Deckel playlist, so it's like it's okay. And I find myself a lot of time hear some like have a lot of questions to Dekel and he answered me through the music. And one of the things that I uh, start to do with my kids, it's uh, every morning when we get on the, to the car on the way to school, I told them to say, okay, good morning for Dekel. Uh, to tell him that we love him and we miss him and ask the, him to give us a song that we're going to start the morning with a song. And each day they tell him that they love him. And it's, it's I don't know, it's unbelievable because every time that the kids ask him for a music, so... He, I don't know, like he do shuffle in the playlist and it's became like a really, uh, it's like more a uh, optimical song and a, a happy song. 
And when I do it by myself, it's like a really like meaningful song. Uh, we had some uh, like a really hard time with a family to do something about Dekel. And it was one situation um, that we actually trying to say goodbye uh, to Dekel. And I told Eden and my family, okay, I want to hear, like, we want to hear some song, but I don't know what kind of song that to choose, but let's give Dekel choose for us. And he chose the song, I don't know, like, if you know it, it's a Israeli song, it's called Imzot Milchama. It's like, if it's going to be a war. And this song talk about a war. And Dekel, through this song, told us it was a war. I didn't have any other opportunity. I need to save life. And like every a Friday, I ask him questions and he answered me through a song. Um, we have a lot of signs from Dekel, like from all over the world. A lot of people uh, ask about him and I work in the National Memorial Hall. So a lot of people come uh, to us to see the legacy of all the fallen. In Israel, we have more than uh, 25,000 fallen and it's a lot. A lot of Jewish people, they killed on Kiddush Hashem and they killed part of him, them. And each time that I do like a tour and talk about Dekel, he sent me some message through some visitors, through like questions that people ask me. Um, and I don't know, it's it's a lot of sign. Like I know that Dekel in a good position there, up there. But with him, we have like 800 soldiers that, and, and it's crazy. Wow. So we're gonna share the song in the description of the class as well. So you guys could listen to it, whoever's tuning in now. I want you to be able to feel, um, I want you to be able to feel Dekel and hear the song and really visualize it. Um, Lital, thank you for sharing about Dekel. Thank you. And I, you were very much part of the everything. You, you Eden was speaking, but you guys put this all together in the background. And it was really both of you and your whole family. And it was a fantastic way of honoring Dekel's memory because this is going to go out to the whole world. There's right now we have a preview on. We have besides you and Eden, we have Itai and we have Esti and we have Shimon and myself. And we are going to spread Dekel's message with the entire world and his story. So not only people in Israel knows, it hit the news over there. And I know it did because... It was shared over here, but now it's going to be shared in a much bigger way. And we're going to make sure that everyone can uh, participate in the Safer Torah to honor Dekel's life. And we're going to take on mitzvot in his memory and really follow what he asked for himself, for us, um, with waking up in the morning and smiling. And if not, don't do it for yourself. Do it for Dekel. He can't wake up in the morning and smile. His neshama smiles, but we have to do it for him down here. We're gonna now hear from. We're gonna we're gonna hear from two more people today who had the opportunity to the privilege to know Dekel. And so we're now gonna hear from um, my brother which I'm so excited. It's his first time live on this class. And he had the honor of being very close to the Suisas. 
um, because he lived in Israel. He was a a chayal himself. And um, he built a beautiful connection with the family. And he stayed in touch. And last year, Simchas Torah, he was actually in Israel when October 7th happened. So he's going to share with us a few words today. So welcome to my dear brother, Shimon. So honored and humbled that you're on. You left work to be on here to honor Dekel. Thank you for being here. If you could unmute yourself. Hi, uh, I'm Shimon. This is rare for me to speak in public, but I just wanted to share. um, When I went to the army in 2007, um, the Moshe. So when I was uh, when I went to Israel to serve in the army in 2007, um, Moshe and Gila Suisa took me in as the um, my mishpacha ma'ametzet, my adoptive family. But not just Moshe and Gila; their children also adopted me as a brother, and they brought me in. Um, Eden and Lital and Noi and Deka, they all gave me this experience that I didn't really expect or understand. I was I thought I was going to be a lone soldier, and instead I was a soldier with a family, and it was extremely special for me to experience that. Um, they opened their house to me, they opened their hearts to me, and they truly gave me a, a different kind of experience of life that I'd ever had before. Um, they showed up at my tekes, uh, you know, to be to be there for me when I thought nobody was going to be there and I was going to be alone. And I look out into the crowd and I see them there, um, which was so special. They brought me to their home for Shabbatim, uh, Shabbatot and for the holidays. I got to experience what it means to be in a Moroccan family. Um, Dekel was young. He was seven years old but he was full of life. And I remember him clearly as a, you know, as a child running around and partaking and bringing everybody, you know, to join in the, in the soccer games, uh, football games out there and uh, sitting quietly at shul um, on Friday nights when I went to be a part of it. And um, it was just all around, they, it, it was beautiful. It was truly a, a wonderful experience being in the army and having a family to rely on. Um, Eden would take me and bring me, you know, to his group of friends, and um, we'd hang out. I mean, I, I, I can't, I can't express thank you enough for that experience. Um, but my point in coming on today is to share what kind of a special family. Deco had and what kind of special person Deco was. Um, when I was there on uh, on Sukkot, I, I brought my wife to visit uh, Moshe and Gila and to, to visit with the family. And Moshe showed me a zula, a little corner of the property that they created just for Deco and his friends um, to come and hang out and to, to um, you know, he said Deco brought his friends over all the time and would you know, would share and enjoy his times with them. And then he, he called Deco uh, to say hi. Deco was in the middle of a mission. He, he stopped, you know, he was in the middle of doing a, uh, something over there on the border. And he stopped to say hi and quickly. And he's like, he remembered me and it was so joyous to see me. Um, and seeing him after many, many years, like that light in his eyes was just I, it brought me back and it reminded me of who he was and who he, you know who he was as a person. Um, and I'm really happy to be able to uh, to be here to try and you know help out with to remind you know to, to remember Deco and to continue his legacy. And um, I think that writing a Sefer Torah in his honor is a really really beautiful thing. And I hope that everybody watching gives a something to help make this happen. Um, uh, Eden and Lital, thank you for letting me join you on this. And uh, I really appreciate everything you guys did for me in my life. Um, you really showed me what it means to care for people and to you know to give of yourselves on a level that I didn't really know of before I met you guys. 
So thank you so much. And thanks, Chaya, for letting me uh, come on here and for giving me the opportunity to share. It's an honor. Thank you, Shimon. Thank you, Shimon, also for the, the talk. And, um, and it was a very good time for us, too. So uh, I remember this time. It was amazing. <laughs> Thanks. And thank you guys for being there for my brother, who I love so much. Um, special that he wasn't there alone because we we have we don't have we have a little bit of family in Israel, but not a lot. And um, so it's really special that you took him in. And um, I feel like this really connects to this week's Parsha of living like the legacy, keeping the legacy alive, like Sarah. And we're now going to hear from my niece, Esti, who had the opportunity and knows the entire Suisa family and is so close to them. I mean, they are family. And um, she's going to share some words. She was in seminary last year. She shared with us in the past, but now she's going to share again. Thank you, Esti, for being on and being here and being you. Hi, everyone. My name is Esti Minglitz. And first, I want to say I'm really grateful to be here. And I'm really grateful to Chaya for having Um, So thank you. Chaya for giving me the opportunity to come on here and having this platform. Um, I want to wish you a lot of success with it and it should have a lot of blessings and it does have a lot of blessings already and it's really doing a great job getting out there and spreading people's stories. So thank you for that. And I'm also super honored that I'm able to speak about Deco, my cousin and such a holy person, um, someone who truly gave his life up to, for others and his neshama should really have a big aliyah. Um, so last year I spent my year in Israel and I'm really grateful to my parents and my seminary because I just really had like an opportunity to like just get to know like I got to learn a lot of Torah but I also got to know the land a lot and I got to understand how the country works and runs um and when October 7th happened um a lot of girls from my seminary left and we had the option to either stay or to leave and because parents were nervous and people were scared but my seminary gave us an option to kind of stay there and to kind of make our own decisions for ourselves, like if that's smart for ourselves. So I was, I really like, I felt like I needed to stay and I felt like it was really a way for me to cope with the situation, to really be present and be able to actually actively help um, and do whatever I could to just like, I guess like just like give a hand and just like help other people. So we did a lot of volunteering. And I was able to also just spend time with the Suiza family, which was really special to me. And I felt like it was really important. Um, and it made a really big impact in my life. And it really changed my life. Like my year in Israel, like that day just changed everything for me. And it was just something that was very impactful. Um, and I want to talk about this week's Torah portion. I was learning it um, by Sarah this week. I was learning it um, earlier this week. And I was like, oh my goodness, like, I don't know why, but something about this like just reminds me of Dekel and reminds me of like how he just like lived and like what I've heard and just like what he's like, just what he like emulates and like how he just, so I'll just say a little bit about this week's Torah portion. Um, It talks about the life of Sarah and like the Muna that Sari Menu and like what she really stood for. And um, it talks about her tent specifically. And it says that her tent was a really special place. Um. Her challah lasted um, from week to week, like it stayed fresh and her candles burned from week to week. And her, um, there was a shina, like Hashem's presence just stayed over her tent. Um, and it was a really special, just like space. And it was really just like, everyone felt it. And after she passed away, um, her son, um, Yitzchak, he said that when he started getting comfort was when he married his wife, who brought back everything that his mom stood for and his mother stood for and sorry, I mean, he stood for. Um, and it's really reminded me of Dekel because um, this whole portion reminds me of him because um, his home has so much light and it really and his family like really does the job of bringing his light back. Um, his fair his presence like every time I went there for Shabbos in Israel last year like his presence really it felt like it was there and I didn't feel so much that it was missing it more felt like even stronger like everyone would just speak about him and just speak about what he stood for and it was really something that like I always felt and like um just 
like two stories um before october 7th literally right before october 7th um me and Deco spoke on the phone and he was like so when are you coming for shabbos like what's going on like like what do you like to drink what do you like to eat like he was very just like he was just very like curious and he was also just very like inviting and it made me feel super comfortable and just like it was really just something that was amazing because he was in he was in start in middle of service he was in the middle of serving the country and he took the time to just ask me like what will make you comfortable like I we really want you to come for Shabbos and it just made me feel like really just I just learned a lot from just that one phone call and it was really special to me I also feel that Hashem gave me the opportunity um to speak to Dekel before he passed away literally I mean before he got killed right before October 7th I was able to speak to him and we had a really meaningful conversation um that was really special another story that I want to share um, one time when I came to the Moshe for Shabbos, um, I was staying not at Moshe and Gila's house that week, but I was staying at another family member of theirs and their sons were staying for Shabbat and they were going to Tel Aviv and they said they were going to come back in the morning. So I asked, I asked their son that was like 17 years old. I was like, why are you not going with your parents? And he was like, I keep Shabbat. And I was like, but your parents, like, I just was like wondering, I was like, well, your parents don't keep Shabbat. So how do you like, how did you come to that decision of keeping Shabbat on your own? And he basically was telling me that him and Deco like kind of created like this group, like this pack that they would keep Shabbat together. And it was something that was really special. And it really made me feel like, wow, this person had such an impact on so many people's lives. Um, And like after Deco passed, uh, after Deco was killed, I just every time I would be like hanging up like stickers or I was like just speaking to people about the story and just like it, there was always someone that came up or that knew him that like would just speak like they would just speak out like I remember one time I was sticking a sticker up like somewhere in Israel and this person just was like oh my goodness I know I know him like and they just started sharing their story about him and like so many people they were like he was my commander and he did this and he was such a special person and like he really touched everyone in so many different types of ways like personally like they just learned lessons and like it's just something that's so incredible to see um I've got messages from people I don't know I write like they sent me tons of pictures there was one girl from Atlanta that sent me um tons of pictures I don't know who she is she reached out to me and it was just something I felt like it was really like his neshama was really burning and like it was really just like he was really there and like it was just a way of like really like it felt very settling and it just like felt like something like that helped everyone cope with and like everyone shared that he shows up in different parts of their life now and it's like really incredible to see um I'm sorry I'm just looking like I just think that like the way that like the, like the way that it explains in like the Torah portion that her her candle kind of just burned on and like everything kind of like burned on like it's something that's so special and I'm so grateful. Like I got to know Deco like during his life, but even after he was killed, I was got to know him a little bit even better. And I'm so grateful to that. And that's something that really just shows like he's such a special person and it really just like brings out who he really was. Um, I like walk around every day with this bracelet on my wrist and I can't, I don't know how to pronounce the Hebrew so well, but it says in English, it translates that, um, every day you should wake up with a smile and you should be happy and you should live your life really like it's such a simple like saying if you look at it like at first hand but if you really think about it it's really true because life it can get really like hard and rough but if you really just like put a smile on your face and say like this is everything is for the best and everything is for the good you can really just like it could really turn around everything for you and it's something that I'm so happy that he gave us this message and he like he left us with that because that's something that's super just impactful um, and something about his name, like Deco, like a palm tree, um, he like, uh, the leaves of the palm tree, like gives shade and like, it really just like gives a comfort. And like, I really feel like that's what he, that's what his name stands for. And like, that's what I just always feel like when I hear stories about him, he was always there for people. He, it's just so, I guess it's just very moving. Um, and I'm just really lucky to have this privilege to know someone like that in my life. And, um, yeah, I just, I'm very grateful for that and thank you and thank you to his siblings who took care of me and took me in in Israel wow I see could you show us the bumper sticker yeah um so there's two stickers this one's the one that says this is the one that it says on my bracelet and it basically is the one about just 
smiling and continuing continuing being just happy and um yeah and then like that one I had by my bed every day last year and I need to stick one up near my bed this year to remind me and then this one is something that's super special it's I just correct me if I'm like a little bit like but it basically says that um it basically says that you can do a little bit like kind of like with like just like staying quiet and you should just do it is that like It says it says in in life you have two uh, um, two options either to uh, um, either to do uh, to uh, be selfish or the other thing is to do something better. So right. they can always uh, um, think about doing something better for the others. For yeah, the and yeah, and it's just like these are just two things that like like living a life with these two messages can really just impact you and like it really impacted me and it really like left me with just like a goal like life can either be like superficial and like oh like these like small little things that like matter to you and really after October 7th and just hearing a lot about Deco and his story and just like everything that he gave to so many people it really helped me just like realize like my priorities in life and like what I really need to focus on and like what's important and what's not and yeah, I'm just super grateful and thank you for having me and I thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you for being here, SD, and for your beautiful words. So special. I want to thank everyone on this forum, especially Eden and Lital, but also also your parents sending my love to them. I still have the necklace that your mother made me. She like crocheted it and it's beautiful. Um so blown away that she took the opportunity when she came years ago I met her at Zalman's house and Simpla's house and with the kids and she made me a necklace as a just like a gesture of saying I love you it was very sweet and I still have it I never it's been years and years so you could tell her that I still have the necklace it meant so much to me mm -hmm. um we're gonna keep we're all gonna keep Deckel's memory alive please let us know how you're gonna keep him alive you got so many different examples what you can do and so many different lessons so i would love to send feedback to the family so if you can if you're hearing this just reach out to me and i will send the family personally your mitzvot that you're doing in honor of deco and if you knew deco and you were hearing this reach out to me so we can connect you with the family and you can share about deco with them they want to hear everything and anything about deco because every day there, there's so many more things coming out and new things and people are reaching out and it's beyond. Thank you for the beautiful presentation. Before we end off with the video, I just wanna say thank yous. I wanna thank um, Hashem and the Rebbe for giving me this opportunity of bringing more light into the world. So thank you for that. I wanna say thank you to my Mashpia and mentor, Shandy Jacobson, who really helps me behind the scenes um, with direction and sometimes just advice and sometimes just thumbs up. So thank you, Shandy, for believing in me. I want to say thank you to all the viewers of this class that tune in weekly. I want to say thank you to all the ambassadors of this class. An ambassador is someone who's, who who uh, takes upon themselves to spread this class with their chats and their statuses. And it's a click of a button and poof, light goes out into the world so fast. So thank you to all those ambassadors. If you'd like to become an ambassador today, please reach out to me. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's C-H-A-Y-A-M-I-N-K, Chaya Mink. We have incredible past classes of every single, so many uh, messages and um, topics that are very interesting and so much on Israel. We also have a Sharbi Tachem class under our umbrella with my cousin Devorle and Druzier, who is an incredible teacher and um, influencer. So I would recommend that you guys tap into that. And lastly, I want to thank most importantly, my dear husband who supports this class and helps me with this class and helps me with the tech of this class and puts it on YouTube. And really this class is like, I, I, I think about it all day, every day, every minute. So he has to put up with that. So thank you, Izzy, for um, helping me make my, uh, my mission easier by supporting it and um, supporting me really appreciate it. Thank you so much, everyone. We're going to now end off with a beautiful video, how to honor someone who passed away 
impacts life and legacy. Today we're talking about deco, but if you have someone that passed away in your life or a loved one or anyone, this is how you can honor him today. Thank you, Eden, for sharing. Thank you. Bishlichuso war ein Bayer allein, hat ihn zugenommen, hat er die Möglichkeit, mehr zu tun, als er hier, hat aber gelassen, die Möglichkeit, für jeder ihn, und alle jeden, Allah, es kam, 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 Wow, thank you so much for sharing. Really appreciate it. Thank you everyone for tuning in, listening to the recording. Thank you everyone for sponsoring towards this Torah. And together we are going to honor his memory. And I hope by the time the Torah is ready, he will be back with the coming of Mashiach. And we're we all are gonna make it happen. So let's do that as you know, um, let's hustle and make it happen and keep spreading more light into the world because we need it and we need all of you to be part of this to happen. So thank you everybody and thank you thank you for letting us honor Deckel today with the world. Really, really appreciate it. And um be the reason someone smiles today and every day. <laughs>